and welcome to the Solid Experts webinar series. Uh, today's topic is on optimization services and some of the related uh, training offerings uh, that are uh, complementary thereto. Um, as a bit of introduction, I am John Nolan. I'm the senior application engineer for Solid Experts in the Nashua, New Hampshire office. Um, and I was actually a direct SolidWorks employee for eight years, uh, part of the team that originally built the whole wizard and toolbox functionality. Uh, I also worked on um, sheet metal, DWG, DXF import, animator, and, and several other sets of functionality within the SolidWorks product itself. Um, my experience goes back 35 years um, doing uh, CAD industry work from automotive suppliers to antennas, uh, all the way through uh, most recently um, Space Science, UNH Space Science Center. The photo you see there in the middle with the sun, that's Solar Orbiter. It is right now approaching Venus for its first gravity flyby. Um, and it is going to actually orbit the sun right up, up near the poles, um, both North and South Poles over a period of several years. Um, and going to be inside the um, orbit of Mercury. It's going to be right sniffing the solar atmosphere directly. Um, I have, in fact, gone back and forth between uh, design engineering work and CAD industry work uh, roughly every other decade or so. Um, interestingly enough, Solid Experts um, goes back to uh, almost the same experience I have with SOLIDWORKS back to 1998. Um, between 90 and 100 people spread out between three offices right now, uh, Montreal, Quebec City, and Nashua, New Hampshire. Um, we also have a sister company that we're currently merging with, with offices in Toronto, California, Ohio, and other places. Um, we provide all sorts of services for, for 3D software and engineering solutions, also printing and, and so forth, and uh, thousands of customers, primarily in the northeast corner of the continent here. Um, and nice shot of our, our new uh, home office facility in Montreal. Um, some of the people you might see. Interestingly enough, a little side story, the um, about 98, uh, Alex, who owns the company, was sent a SolidWorks uh, 97 promo CD and he loved it. And so Solid Experts is actually uh, in his wife's name <laughs> for the time being. Um, Dassault and SolidWorks uh, also came together in about uh, 97, 98. SolidWorks itself as a product was uh, first established in 1993 and started shipping product in 95. Um, again, millions of users spread throughout the world. Uh, a good portion of that is the education uh, community. So all the college students and, and even high school students throughout the world. Um, but it's probably the most popular 3D CAD platform out there by far. Um, and as you should be aware, um, it's spread out much more than just the basic design tools. Um, so we have you know, packages for data management. PDM has been around for a long time. Uh, if you need more of a project-oriented uh, focus, there is a manage system as well. That, that's a, a, an, a, an addition on top of PDM. Um, we have the whole new 3D experience portfolio. So uh, conceptual design, industrial design, simulation, rendering, all sorts of things. Um, and you can connect a seat of SolidWorks to that. Uh, you can have a seat of SolidWorks within it. Um, all kinds of options for that. You're going to see much more of that uh, with the 2021 uh, launch experience videos. Again, the traditional SOLIDWORKS mechanical design tools, the electrical product, which if you're not familiar, electrical is primarily wires and cables and harnesses. PCB is a separate product, which is the actual board design, the circuit card design. Um, and then, of course, we have the draft site 2D. Uh, which is a replacement for an out-and-out -out straight AutoCAD. Um, on the analysis side, um, there's the simulation product, so uh, primarily simulation itself, the mechanical FEA stuff, uh, flow simulation, 
uh, plastics, which is mold filling, all right? So fluid flow specific to um, molten polymers. Um, and then sustainability is actually lumped under the end analysis products because it is in fact based on an LCA, um, limited carbon allowance, and there is a certified method of calculating those so it knows your carbon footprint and energy impact and so on and so forth. There is a series of communication related products now. So you've always had PhotoView 360 in your pro and premium seats for quite some time. Now you have a, uh, an additional standalone visualized product. Um, PhotoView 360, good enough for your, your web page, your brochures. Uh, visualize, it's, it's full magazine ready artwork. Um, if you've seen any of the Marvel movie trailers, a lot of that material is generated with Visualize. Uh, Model-based definition is, is the concept of, particularly for the military suppliers and automotive industry, doing away with drawings and putting all your appropriate annotation right in the 3D files. Um, SolidWorks Cam has been out for a couple of releases now. Inspection for generating your QC reports semi-automatically. And then Composer is a, an all-purpose um, technical writing slash publication type app um, takes any CAD assembly, not just SolidWorks, and allows you to prep it and animate it and light it and render it and do all sorts of things uh, to put it in documents, be it proposals or instruction files or, or what have you. Um, and then there's the whole community itself. Um, user groups are in fact still meeting, so SWUGS, I'll have a little bit about that in a bit. Um, but there is everything you find online, uh, you know, the My SolidWorks panel and so forth. And of course, we have our own uh, My 3D Experts um, channels on YouTube and in and, and social media uh, all over the place. Actually, even just the general SolidWorks Facebook users group um, is well attended um, by both, uh, you know, young students trying to get better in the industry and uh, even SolidWorks staff occasionally answering some of their questions. Um, we are a value-added reseller for both SolidWorks and 3D printing products, um, fully certified in, in SolidWorks and MarkForged. Um, we are one of the few MarkForged metal certified outlets um, in the Northeast region. Um, we do have several levels of live phone support to uh, address your questions every day. Um, you can call during business hours, 800 number, and you will get a live person. Um, I have associates uh, sharing the office with me here who pick up a, a large majority of the calls. And we have specialists in all different areas, uh, classroom instruction, straight up technical support, uh, high level applications like PDM and DriveWorks, and you know other uh, application engineers like myself will come out and do these optimization service visits and uh, consult with you on a regular basis. Um, to try to improve your experience overall. Uh, we do have consulting services and this optimization uh, service that we're talking about is, is one of those services, is one of several. Um, if you have new seats that you're adding and you're hiring a kid fresh out of university, uh, we'll come and, and install the software for them, get them up to speed with your company templates, show them the ins and outs of a proper drawing sheet format, all that sort of thing. Uh, so there's, there's things such as no worries startup and, and uh, uh, various uh, different methods of, of having consulting services. What we're talking about today primarily is our optimization services. And it's generally a four or five day investment on our part, a couple of days on your end. Um, so, before outbreak and so forth, we would do most of this you know, live on site. Um, we do do some of it web now, but it's basically person to person interviews um, and some observation with your mechanical design and engineering teams, right? Primarily, it, but it could also be managers, QA folks, whoever is involved in, in working with the software, right? Um, if you're one of our customers, we know what your product lists are, but these services are available to, even to people who don't have us as a as their particular primary of our. Um, we'll do an audit of what products you have 
you know, do you have expired seats? Do you have some SNL seats that are going unused? That sort of thing. Um, and then I come back to the office or, or, you know, back to the house and however the case may be and do a um, three or four day analysis of all the notes and information I've gathered in that initial interview and, and observation. And then we generate an extended report of both the occurrence status and suggestions for making adjustments to improve uh, your overall use of the software and, and your ability to get more projects done um, with the tools that you have. Um, there is a full detailed multi-page report that comes out of this. If you've ever uh, been involved with a, an ISO audit or a software QA audit and so forth, it's a similar type report. Um, there is a roadmap in it, so this kind of mind map uh, type graphic that goes along with it. Uh, we explain what your current status is. You know, do you have some staff that's not as experienced as others? Do you have, you know, that one particular guy that seems to be able to answer everyone else's questions about how to do something in the software? Um, we may suggest additional products. So if you have a particular problem with, say, large assembly drawings and so forth, for instance, we might suggest that perhaps you change your approach on how you address those drawings and consider using Composer for some of the work you're otherwise doing with those drawings. Um, there are a lot of firms that do not upgrade every single year, and um, you may have missed out on a particular uh, service pack fix that addressed one of the problems you're experiencing. You know, however, there are often hot fixes that are issued just for that scenario. So it could be very well that the, the graphics issue you were having in eDrawing was actually addressed with a hot fix um, at 2018 or 2019. And we can find those for you in, in the SolidWorks knowledge base and, and show you how to implement those. Um, there will be training recommendations, whether it's classroom with us or um, via our online services like you're seeing today with GoToWebinar, um, or just independent. Here's a list of um, either training uh, modules in my SolidWorks or Solid Professor or different um, items from the SWUGS that will help you address this particular question or issue that you're having with certain SOLIDWORKS files. Um, and also make suggestions relative to hardware upgrades. And this could extend particularly nowadays to uh, operating systems as well. Um, particularly uh, when it comes to PDM, um, SQL Server um, editions do get sunset by Microsoft. Windows Server editions are, are being retired by Microsoft at a fairly regular pace. Um, and so we might make suggestions of, hey, prepare now to upgrade a server, spin up a new VM with a new OS, that sort of thing. Um, and in general, the report is gonna have a roadmap of several steps that you can implement over a period of, of weeks to months to improve the general productivity of all the engineers and designers working with the software. Um, some things that may come out of a, an optimization study that you would hire us for um, is again, those, those hot fixes is if your IT department isn't aware of how to apply those, we'll show you how that's done. We'll identify the three that you need to apply um, and, and where to find the XE, how to implement it, how to in, import it on the stations. Um, Looking at functionality that you may have missed, there are on average 200 enhancements every single release. And I know for a fact when I worked in space science, um, I had been an employee since 98 time frame, as I mentioned. The fellow I shared an office with had been a beta tester back at 96. Uh, so we joked that we had you know, the most SOLIDWORKS experience in all of New Hampshire in that tiny little office. And we knew for a fact that there were things that we were we were doing the the harder way, you know, taking three steps instead of one step to do something. Um, one of the things that's happened over the years is, particularly with drawings, there's additional functionality in your sheet formats and drawing templates today. So if you've been steadily upgrading since 2010 or before, um, you may in fact be just having issues because 
your templates are, are upgrades from 2010. Um, and you really need to take a current template, 2019 or 2020, and, and redo some of that customization to get the most out of the functionality. Um, the other thing is just standardization of templates across your firm. Do you have users that are, are grabbing their own file templates uh, when they should be using the corporate uh, provided ones? Um, the software does in fact have a safety in it, uh, such that if you accidentally delete your templates, it will auto-generate its own. Um, the reason being is uh, that way you can't possibly disable the software by removing the templates. Um, again, suggestions for either user self-training or purchase training through us or, or other outlets. And um, uh, perhaps if, if you know, repeated actions are something that your firm does a lot of, uh, be it a particular assembly routine, uh, a, you know, a drawing procedure or something like that, we might suggest um, having some macros or some feature libraries and so forth to help automate that process. Uh, SolidWorks itself does have a very extensive API action set. Uh, we provide 15 of our own macros for our customers. Um, and you can hire our software people to, to make macros for you if you don't wanna get into the, the API yourself. Um, I also can refer you to firms in Massachusetts that specialize in uh, making uh, little add-on apps for SolidWorks. Um, again, speaking of enhancements, yes, there's on average 200 enhancements every release. Um, and yes, the software has a 180, 190 page PDF file of all of those enhancements. Um, but I know for a fact, even from my personal experience, it's a lot of work to try to keep up on all that. What I do every release since 2015 is I prepare for you a five to six page uh, Cliff Notes summary. And particularly for the later releases, it's even hyperlinked to the full um, explanation of what's in the enhancements. Um, so you can scroll through the list in a lunch hour, pick out the things that are most interesting to you and that will apply to your particular use of the software, click on the link, and get the full explanation and hopefully implement that improved workflow. Um, one of the things related to all this is SolidWorks is actually bringing back some uh, official training classes that have been kind of mothballed in the last few years. Uh, most specifically is a new SolidWorks refresher class. So this is in a similar format to the original essentials, um, but it's meant for somebody who's had some SolidWorks experience generally two or more years using the software. Um, perhaps you completed the CSWA exam in college. If you didn't, we would like you to at least try the practice exam that's online at mysolidworks.com. Um, that's, a, that's a good prerequisite to, to show that you're ready for the class. Um, it is a four-day four format, like the Essentials class, um, but it doesn't start off like Essentials where you have nothing on the screen and we teach you to throw a line, then a box, then a cube, and, and work all the way up. Um, it generally assumes that you can make most basic parts, um, and it focuses more on overall best practices, kind of what our, our optimization service does. And I'm gonna show a little bit about that shortly. Um, this little graphic here down the bottom, every year at the uh, annual world event in February, there is a model mania contest and it's for all the users and application engineers like myself and even some of the staff. And basically the contest is they throw a, a shape up on the screen, model it as quick as you can, then they show a drawing with an engineering change that you have to make, make the change, update the drawing, and, and by the way, run a quick um, Sim Expert or uh, Sim Express uh, FEA study on it. Um, and so you can see some of the variety of pieces here. It's, um, if you search for it in Google, you'll find a link in the SolidWorks tech blog for it, and you can download the files and take a look at them. It, it's really some nice stuff of innovative techniques of using nested profiles, multi-body techniques, all that sort of stuff um, to make uh, what can be surprisingly complex geometry. We do have, in addition to the service, 
optimization uh, based custom training. So some of the content that you would normally have in a, an optimization service call, you can get just as a straight custom training class. Uh, we have a couple of firms doing that now. Um, it's one to two day of course content. Um, and we may allow you to cherry pick um, lessons from advanced part and a, a couple from assembly and a couple from simulation or whatever. Um, even all our online classes in, and even the standard SOLIDWORKS ones are live instructor-led events. They're not pre-recorded. Um, it's connected on a, on a go-to training platform, which is much the same as this go-to webinar, but more interactive. Um, it's bi-directional. You can share your screen back to us um, and so forth. We can even highlight on your screen. There's whiteboard options, all sorts of things. We do now have some limited in-person capability. Uh, so we're allowing up to two to four people in our training rooms currently. Um, um, there is also the possibility on special occasions for us to go on site. One of the few VARs that actually go on site on a, on a general basis. Um, also of note, particularly recently, there are uh, workforce training grants available in both the state of Massachusetts and the province of Quebec. And you can talk to one of the account managers to see what it might take uh, to get introduced to a, one of these grant broker firms and, and get qualified so that you can get the lion's share of your, your training cost covered um, by a state grant. Um, and for those people who are either uh, professional engineers or perhaps you know high school and college instructors and stuff, for all our trainings, we can generate um, CEU records uh, so if you need to accumulate those for your, your, your certification, uh, we can provide those. Um, and we've done it for all sorts of different customers, large and small, um, you know, two person engineering type departments to, to uh, you know, 20 person uh, design teams, a number of different industries uh, all throughout the, uh, the Northeast region here. This little graphic in the, in the background here is actually a um, telescope retrofit uh, on a mountaintop in Hawaii. And actually, when I was involved in space science several years ago, um, I had the opportunity to perhaps bid to uh, get on that program and actually go and, and do that project. At the time, I didn't want to move my family to Hawaii. Um, but now that I see the finished work, it's uh, perhaps a, a missed opportunity there. Um, some of the things that we would cover, and this is just quick snapshots of what you might expect um, as a result from an optimization service visit, right? So some of the things we're going to look at are what's your hardware uh, status look like? Um, you know, we have specific uh, recommendations for, for RAM and, and video cards and so forth. Um, above and beyond what you just find in the SOLIDWORKS website. Um, in general, you want a good NVIDIA or AMD card. And in particular, um, for 2019, 2020, and now 2021, which went live yesterday, by the way, um, the better the video card, the better your performance is going to be. Um, currently, there's no longer any limit to the graphics power that SOLIDWORKS can utilize. So you will get more bang for your buck uh, with the higher end cards than you ever did before. Um, some of the things is, you know, antivirus uh, and, and web security type software. It's, it's nearly impossible to have any sort of uh, malware attached to a solid part file. Um, so that's one of the things that, you know, we recommend on a regular basis. Um, adjusting your, your power plan, you, how to use the SOLIDWORKS RX diagnostics. There's, there's, two modules built right into the software for you to use, um, and the new CAD admin dashboard. Speaking of that, if you've ever at the end of an install come across the um, dialog that says, you know, do you want to uh, contribute to the customer improvement program and so forth, absolutely check yes. Um, you know, it sends the, the crash logs and so forth, this all works for you. Um, but also what they're now doing through the improved CAD admin dashboard is whoever the CAD admin is at your firm can now review some of that information back 
So you can see what the mean time between failures is on a particular station. Um, and you can you know, graphically verify that yes, Joe over in the design group has a problem relative to his associates and so forth. Um, and better isolate that, yeah, that's a real problem or it's more of a perception issue, right? Um, so yeah, some of this, this software data that then they've accumulating and trying to crack the, the crashes and, and stalling points um, is now available to you as a CAD admin. Um, and if you're interested in some of this stuff, um, they, I can provide a PDF copy of this presentation afterwards with the hyperlinks in it, uh, if you would like. Um, if you didn't install that option or click that box at the end of an install, you can, in your system options, uh, turn that option on after the fact. You don't have to reinstall to do that. Um, again, we've talked about templates. So if you have PDM, it's absolutely a good idea to put your part drawing and assembly templates and your sheet formats and so forth um, in the PDM for protection and to help make sure that everyone's using the correct ones, right? Not just the local copies. Um, and absolutely, you know, you can pay an intern to do it. A junior engineer is their first, you know, week job or whatever. Um, you know, set them up properly, map the the, the file properties accordingly, um, so that there's less typing when you go to check something in or whatever. Um, and one of the things that you know people have gotten out of is having multiple part templates for different applications. You know, have a, a sheet metal specific template and a a, a turned part and a machine part and molded part. You know, we used to call them starter parts back in the days. Um, you know, there's no reason not to have uh, templates for additional uses rather than you firing up a new file and doing a bunch of typing before you even get started. Um, performance evaluation of files has been extended. It used to be primarily for parts. And now it applies equally well to assemblies and drawings. And this is a very good tool to help identify what drawing view, what particular part is, is really the source of your performance issues on a particular um, large assembly or, or large drawing file. And um, one of the things that you know a lot of people will know, okay, if you download a, a screw for McMaster car and you know to suppress the fully detailed thread feature. Well, that's only half the equation there, really. Feature real build time is not the only thing chewing on your, your computer performance. Um, there's a little thing called graphics triangles. And if you look at your document properties, um, image quality, when you start with the stock SOLIDWORKS template, that image quality is down about a third or a quarter. Um, if you look at the parts that you download from McMaster Car, they're pegged all the way right with the graphics tuned all the way up. Looks wonderful on the website. It's not necessary. Um, you don't really wanna read the, the bolt grade markings off a of hex head screw. Um, you just need to be able to recognize that as a, as a hex head versus a Phillips head or whatever, right? Um, so that's one of the things is you can identify those. Um, we actually had a case of a firm that was building equipment for Gillette um, and they found that some of their electrical um, connectors had the image quality pegged all the way up and had uh, multiple, multiple radius fillets all over the place. And it was that one electrical connector that was that was killing their assembly performance. Um, handling of imported geometry. Uh, 3D interconnect has been introduced for several releases now. Um, in 2018 and 2019, it is something that you turn on. It is off by default in your system options. In 2020, it is on by default. Um, so that's one of the things to be aware of. And um, there are options where it's, it's quite valid to save a, an assembly that you got from a supplier or partner or a division you purchased or whatever, and save it as a solid part instead. Um, take some of the overhead out of, out of it and just use it as a multi-body part. Um, you know, this little case down at the bottom is a, a chassis for a mail truck. Um, so it actually, um, it's a body that sits on a, on a Ford uh, chassis. And, um, you know, if you're working primarily 
on the chassis and you're not interested in the body, save it as a part. You, you, know, you don't need to know that the, the seat and the steering wheel are, are separate parts from the, the rest of it. You're just handling it as one continuous component. Um, and again, performance and, and evaluation and assembly visualization apply equally well there. Um, interesting little tidbit to add to that. Um, interference detection works for multi-body part now in 2020. Uh, so that's a nice little tidbit if you haven't uh, come across that and been able to take advantage of it yet. Again, one of the things that's been enhanced, then this goes back, started in 2005 and has continued ever since. Um, the UI has been updated in, in little bits here and there. Um, things with the in-context bars, um, the breadcrumbs now at your cursor and so forth, that realistically you don't need to go in and out of the menus anymore. Almost every function you need at a particular point is on your left or right mouse button clicks. And furthermore, uh, even keyboard shortcuts you can assign to uh, mouse gestures. So if you click and drag your mouse in a specific fashion, you can expose quadrants of shortcut commands. Uh, so you don't even have to use the keyboard for shortcuts. Uh, you can map them to mouse gestures and vice versa. Um, and anything, any toolbar that you see, any uh, in-context menu that you see and stuff can be fully customized now. So you can put sketch commands on a modeling toolbar. Um, you can put different things on your shortcut toolbars, all sorts of things. You can mix and match whatever makes sense for you and adapt the software to the the functions that you use the most. So if you're a sheet metal guy, you can put all your sheet metal stuff together uh, for quick reference right out of your mouse. You know, some of the things we might review in, in a um, uh, optimization session would be best practices for part files, all the different things relative to performance on that, um, how to use, you know, chamfer and fill it as features rather than in sketch it and these and why uh, that applies a lot of the time. Uh, interesting thing of note, um, you may not have run across it, or, or if you haven't done a lot of part uh, review performance, a revolve is the fastest feature SOLIDWORKS can compute. Um, so particularly for things like bolts, screws, washers, nuts, bearings, o-rings, what have you, if you can model it as a revolve, you're going to have better performance. And particularly for a bit of hardware like that, you're not really going to ECO it or anything. Yeah, make it as, as quick as SOLIDWORKS can compute it, save it in your design library or your toolbox that way. And, and you know, if you do that for every single bit of hardware times the tens of thousands that you use on, on an annual basis in your assemblies, you, you'll notice a difference. Um, for really complex files, You've probably seen the uh, feature rebuild bar, the blue bar at the bottom, um, but there is a freeze bar. It's not normally displayed. You have to turn it on in the system options, but there's a yellow freeze bar that you can drag down from the top. And what that does is it actually freezes your part features out of the rebuild scenario. Um, and so what will happen is, is if you do have a rebuild in a SOLIDWORKS file, it'll only recur, occur between the blue bar and the yellow bar. It'll ignore the rest of the, the features. Um, and again, for complex geometry and so forth, that also can make a big difference. Um, there are some firms that insist that when a drawing is fully released in PDM, that the freeze bar be enabled and, and dragged all the way down even. Um, similarly, for assemblies, there's all kinds of ways to assemble something in SOLIDWORKS, but knowing how the mates solve and why they solve in the particular order they do can influence your, your assembly uh, techniques. And again, will improve your assembly open time, your rebuild time, uh, the, the ability to pan, zoom, and, and rotate, and, and all that stuff. Um, so, you know, generally is have one solid component that's the primary item in an assembly. Um, SOLIDWORKS in general really doesn't care where in 3D space your geometry is, but you care and um, when properly uh, maintained and so forth, you'll find that things uh, open and um, uh, model much faster and rebuild much faster. Um, 
you have all sorts of abilities to create uh, folders in your in your component tree now, and you know certainly group your hardware in them and so forth. There is a flag for the toolbox parts, and um, on specialty cases, I can show you how to enable that uh, even for your own hardware. So if you're using stuff in design library rather than toolbox, um, you can in fact make it behave such that the selection filters and so forth and some of the other utility functions in SOLIDWORKS thinks it's a toolbox file and treats it the same way, um, which again will improve your, your overall performance. And of course, the visualization and performance evaluation we've already mentioned. Um, drawings, drawings have improved significantly, particularly in the last two releases. Um, one of the things of note is again, I mentioned the sheet formats are intelligent nowadays. So you can have your zones automatically reflected in your revision blocks and so forth. Um, you can have your title block entries, you know, directly editable from the from the sheet view rather than going into edit sheet format mode. Um, one thing that new, once you've saved a drawing in 2020, you can open it in detailing mode. So this is an alternative to the prior detach mode, whereby it doesn't load the full model geometry behind it, all right? Key advantage is your file is gonna open in a fraction of the time it otherwise would. Um, you won't be able to create totally new views, but for the views you have, you can create all the dimensions and notes and GTALs and anything else you would normally do to detail a drawing, right? That's what it is, detailing mode. Um, so again, particularly for large multi-sheet drawings, be them assemblies or just complicated molded components, and it can make a significant difference in how fast that file opens. And also all the edits that you make there are fully live, no matter how somebody else opens that same drawing later. Um, it's not a special red line mode or anything like that. Um, it just improves you when you open the file to get it open in a much quicker um, time frame. And again, we have some recommendations. Uh, one of the things that I didn't note earlier, um, part of my experience beyond the 35 years in industry and so forth, is I am still ASME chairman for New Hampshire and Maine for the local sections. Uh, so I haven't been involved for a number of years in the ASME and ANSI standards. And if you have any questions about that sort of thing, um, you can ask me about that as well, um, particularly uh, relating to MBD, um, whether you want to employ model based definition or not, or if you're just curious what it really means, um, you can ask us about that. Um, you know, approaching uh, getting wrapped up on this a bit, SOLIDWORKS community is very active. Uh, even after the uh, pandemic and so forth, we're not meeting as live as we once were but there's user groups all over New England. There's three <laughs> in Massachusetts alone, um, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island is still out there kind of together. Um, they meet sometimes every other month. Uh, sometimes it might be once a quarter. Um, the SOLIDWORKS tech blog has um, part reviewer tutorials. So if you've gone through all the tutorials in the software, you've done the general stuff, I absolutely recommend you know, downloading a few of the part reviewer tutorials. Part reviewer is a function that's, um, if you haven't tried it out, it's kind of like VCR controls for your feature tree. And you can run forwards and backwards. And the nice things about the tutorial ones is they actually comment the order of steps that they used and why they did it. And this is the SOLIDWORKS TTMs that advise um, and the files are all sorts of different samples footballs and and molded parts and actual molds and all sorts of different things um, swagins are now transitioned to meetup so rather than swagin.org if you just go and meet up and search swagin or swag you'll find uh, where the next meeting is and who's holding it and and what session is going on um, content central again you know download some parts from the general library and roll back and forth through the feature tree to learn how somebody else approached a particular part. Again, the Facebook groups and, and similar groups are, are quite active. Um, we have several of our own 
uh, two to five minute tutorial videos on our YouTube channel. Um, and SOLIDWORKS Live is a whole YouTube series where about once a month, um, they do a half hour session and you know it can be designing stairs of all varieties. Um, you know, part of it this month was the, the 2021 announcements and, and so forth. Um, speaking of all that, coming up uh, this month and next, SlugMe, SOLIDWORKS, largest user group meeting ever uh, for the sixth time, by the way. Uh, this event used to be held at, at SOLIDWORKS headquarters in Waltham. It will be virtual this year. And this connects all the user groups throughout the world. Um, Japan, uh, South America, Brazil, uh, all over the world, all over the US. Um, it's a live event, 6 to 9 PM. Um, you have two very experienced users presenting. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be guys from the user group leaders and so forth also uh, commenting and, and providing tips and so forth. Um, the Boston area group, which is, is the primary host for the, for the slug me and one of the driving uh, groups for it, is actually having their own um, group meeting this month, uh, just a general, you know, stump the chumps tech panel. Uh, so if you've got a particular SOLIDWORKS question and you don't want to address me directly with it, um, you can sign up for the, that meeting. You'll find it on, on meetup.com and one of the user group leaders will answer your question. All right. uh, so that'll be a live presentation on October 22nd. Again, the largest group meeting ever uh, will be November 17th. Um, so one of the other things that might come out of a, an optimization study is uh, providing you with our set of macros and showing you how to use uh, some of those. Um, so we provide up to 15 different tools, primarily on SOLIDWORKS, but we also have a PDM expert uh, utility set. So if you're a firm that has a good PDM Pro admin, we can work with that admin to uh, implement uh, three or four tools on that aspect. Um, but some of the things that, you know, here are some highlight ones. Um, Cut Experts is a utility whereby normally to get a flat view DXF from a SOLIDWORKS file without a drawing, it has to be a sheet metal part. Well, we've got a macro that does that for any part. Um, you know, we have a lot of customers that are in the furniture business, so it's not a sheet metal part per se, but they need the same style of DXF that you would for a sheet metal part. Uh, so we have a macro to do that. Um, we have a macro that helps you fill out your, all your cut list properties correctly. Um, save experts. You know, you can make it as an action in your PDM workflow so that when you release a file, it automatically not only generates the PDF, but also maybe a step file for CNC work or CAM, um, maybe a backup IGES file. Um, believe it or not, I still come across firms that are creating files in, in neutral formats as backups and so forth. Um, and we have a little utility that'll save a file in, in up to half a dozen different ways all in one shot for you. And, and because it's using the API behind SOLIDWORKS in, in uh, C or C++, it can execute much, much faster than you ever could. Um, you simply cannot click a mouse fast enough to compete with what the API can do. Again, you know, we've got customers all throughout the, the Northeast region here. Um, all these little dots are, are places. Uh, we're down here today in, in Nashua, New Hampshire, but we do go all the way up to the far extremes of Canada, out to the ends of the, the Maritimes. Uh, and we even have a few sites in, in New York and other places now too. Uh, so customers all over, all different types um, and so forth. If you wanna find us online, you don't wanna ask me directly and so forth, um, you'll find us on all the social media platforms and so forth. And again, I mentioned our YouTube channel and so forth. Um, so thank you for your attention. I'm going to open.